makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Ash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Vasco in it. Dear Mama Me, soon is the coming of summer and everybody is a start to slow down. Even a business has got to what they call a slack season. That's a comma between a June and a September. Me, I'm a got a different kind of business. With a me slack season is a come between a January and a December. <laughs> but a maybe I think a business is a not the for Americans. Over here, everybody wants the latest. Doesn't have to be the best, as long as it's the latest. Yesterday, woman is a come into my antique store. I'm going to show her a beautiful coffee grinder. Is an antique from 19... Uh, no, it was 18 or 32. Woman says she's a like a very much, but I'm a no matter sailor. She's a one for 1950 model. <laughs> but still, maybe making the money is not so important. I'm a like the antique business, so I'm a happy. Why I'm a pick of the antique business? Well, is a lots of reasons, and uh, well, I'm a like the smell of all the things. Like Uncle Pietro is a like he's a goat. <laughs> My countryman, Pasquale, he thinks I'm crazy. He's only got a three big reasons for living. One the bigger reason is to make the money, and the other two reasons is his fat daughter, Rosa. <laughs> if only he could have married her off to me. Last few days, Pasquale is a look on me like a big eagle circling around the little bird. <laughs> Any day now, I'm expecting she'll dive down on me and... Uh... Luigi, my friend! <laughs> hello, Luigi, hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hmm, how nice you look, my little banana nose. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, are you feeling good? Yes, sir. And how's your disposition? Good? Yes, sir. And are you happy to be living in America, eh? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> then what do you say to you and my little... No. Luigi, why you say no before I'm asking a question? Because if the question is what I'm thinking, then the answer is what are you heard? <laughs> oh, you're so touchy. What question do you think I was going to ask you? Can I marry Rosa? Of course you can. Congratulations. <laughs> no, 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 but stop, stop, stop kissing me. I'm, I'm not going to marry Rosa. All right, then how's about if she should marry you? No. <laughs> Luigi, don't be stubborn. After all, it's not for Rosa's sake I'm asking you to get a marriage. It's for your own sake. My sake? Sure. They've got a saying in America, he who lives alone lives by himself. <laughs> <laughs> This proves to Luigi that every man needs a good woman who's going to love him and make his meals and take care of him. If you marry my Rosa, she's going to protect you like a mama hen that's a sit over a little egg. Nothing I don't know, Pasquale. I'm a no one to get a scrambled. <laughs> All right, the wiser guy. Since I'm not going to appeal it to your heart, I'm going to appeal it to your brain. You're a bad businessman, Right. Mm, well, uh... There's a no wells about it. There's a whole reservoir. <laughs> you was born with a tin spoon in your mouth. Now, tell me, why should you go through life struggling like a hunter going after teeny weeny game when all the time I'm standing here with my big trap? <laughs> You're so right, Pasquale. You got to the biggest trap I ever saw. LAUGHTER 
<laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm saying it's a come out of different. <laughs> All right, Luigi, I'm tired of playing the mouses and the cats. I'm going to give you one last chance to give up before I'm going to do a terrible thing to you. Terrible thing? What, Squally, what, what are you going to do? I ain't talking, but believe me, it's going to be a catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you say? Y-E-S-S or K-N-O-W? <laughs> Pasquale, you spelled them wrong. I don't care how I spell as long as I can recognize. <laughs> well? K-N-O-W? Okay, you stupid boob. You just sign you own a death certificate. Come on in, Joe. Hi. Joe, you put up the sign yet? Natch. Well, then start to work from right now. Oak. Luigi, from an hour on, Joe's running this store. Yeah, but Pasquale, how can he? He can't even talk English. <laughs> and besides, Pasquale, you can't do this. Antiques is belonging to me. Oh, yes? You figure out all of your back rent, how much you owe me for everything, plus the fact that I own the property, it adds up to one thing. You out in the street. Excuse me, Bob. I want to dust up around here. Everything looks so, uh, so old. Well, is it supposed to? Hey, Joe... How you gonna run an antique shop? You know anything about antiques? Sure. I'm married to one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh you're killing me. No, 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 no. You can't do this to me, Pasquale. I'm not believing. The stories mean too much to me. All right, stay here. If you want to be a place to find the chance, it's up to you. Hey, Joe, maybe we stick a kite in his hand and send Luigi for a statue of Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> You kill me. <laughs> please, please, a gentleman. Maybe you go out of sight and kill each other. <laughs> well, Joe, I gotta go now. You do what you have to. I'm gonna have another look at the new sign. Pasquale's a hockey shop. Mamma mia. They're making my place into a hockey shop. Well, might as well start cleaning right now. Excuse me, friend. I want a gal just like that gal that married dear old... You got anything in the cash register? Well, uh, is it just an old picture? Is it Washington of the Valley Forge? Excuse me, please. I'm, I'm, I'm going to back. I think... I think I'm going to know how you feel, Mr. Washington, when it was so cold in the Valley Forge. Cracked. Just cracked. Well, we can't let sentiment interfere with the progress of modern business. If you knew Susie like I knew... Oh, hello. I brought something in with me that I thought perhaps you might like to buy. Certainly, madam. That's what we're here for. Buy and sell. Oh, careful. You'll break it. That's no way to handle an antique. All right, lady. Keep your shirt on. What? Hmm. What is it? Looks like a farmhouse. What is it? Why, it's a genuine colonial teapot. See, uh, the roof comes off. Ah, <laughs> that's one on me. <laughs> well, I can go along with a gag. I'm a sport. Give you two bucks. What? Why, this teapot is over a hundred years old. Gee, I'm glad you tipped me off. If it's that old, I can only let you have a buck. Oh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Just a minute. Where's the man that's usually here? Mr. Uh... The Basco? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm here. Somebody calling my name? Oh, Hello, lady. Hello. Oh, it's a, such a lovely teapot. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, is a Boston 1842 porcelain teapot, right? Yes, but look, I don't understand. Aren't you the... No, no, I'm, uh, I'm uh, got nothing to do here no more. That's right, lady. This joint is Pasquale's hock shop now. A hock shop? Well, I'll take my teapot elsewhere. Oak with me. But if you come across any old junk that's more saleable, let's have a look at it. Hmm. I'm sorry, Mr. Basco. Good day. I can see how long this store will last. Oh, cracked. Everybody's cracked. Today. Yeah, yeah, everybody's a cracked. If I'm no suffy like he's no Susie, oh, that's a summer day. Well, Joe, how's the business? No business. Come when a girl is just like a oh, girl. Oh, shut up. Huh? 
How can I do any business here? Everybody comes in wants to do business only with Happy here. That's right, Pasquale. There's no use you should have thrown me out. Pasquale, let me stay here. I'm going to work hard and I'll pay you back what I'm going to owe you. Oh, no. You're too smart for your own senses. Joe, what do we do? Well, the way I figure it, you'll never make it go just hanging up a new sign. You've got to get rid of the stuff here, repaint the store, start out fresh. Now, Pasquale, you can't do that. Hey, already you're singing out of the back of your head, eh? I'm agree with you, Joe, but how's it possible to get rid of this junk ahead? Well, the only good and sure way is an auction. Auction? That's a wonderful idea, Joe. Sure. We auction off everything to the highest bidder. In that way, I'm going to finish with these antiques once and for all. Pasquale, uh, uh, Pasquale, think of what are you doing, huh? Isn't that too much money you're going to make from auction? And to me, is it mean, mean more than a life to have these antiques? You sell them, is it going to... What is... Is it going to drive me out of my mind? Good, Luigi, good. Now we kill two birds with one stone. When the auctioneer is saying, go and go and go on, he's not only selling the merchandise, he's describing your condition. <laughs> now, Luigi, I would have never brought you here from the older country if I knew you initials, the L.B., was going to stand for Luigi Bachelor. Then, uh, Pasquale, you're going to go through with the auction? That's right, and it's a goodbye for you. At last, I'm going to learn my bigger lesson. Bigger lesson? Yes, and next time I bring over somebody from Italy, I'm going to have them stamped to return if they're not married in 30 days. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, I'd like to mention the enjoyment you can get from delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. With the weather getting warmer, for instance, it's natural for your mouth to feel dry at times. And a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum just hits the spot. That lively, full-bodied flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. And you can enjoy the smooth, chewing, and pleasant refreshment even if you're busy working. So slip a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum into your purse or pocket and keep it handy for those times when you want a delicious taste treat and a refreshing little lift. Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum, healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, is a terrible news for me. Tomorrow night, the Pasquale is auction off in my place. Already he's started to change everything. Over the windows hanging the three balls, and under it, it's a say, Pasquale is a combination of pony shop and an antique store. Highest the prices are paid for all the gold. Also, after tomorrow, Mama no can sleep in the back. So I'm found a nice bench in a park. <laughs> this is all right for the summer, but in the winter, is it too cold? I'm going to get enough money, so I'm going to move my bench into a hotel room. <laughs> Mamma me, I'm a feel so bad. I'm not even able to go to my night school. So I was sitting here for the last night, alone in my store, when in as come my classmate, the Schultz. Luigi, my fellow boob. Hello, Schultz. <laughs> come on, Luigi. I thought I would stop by so we go to school together. Hmm? Well, thank you, Schultz, but I'm not going to school. What? What's the matter with you, Luigi. You sound like a worm that looks at its face in the mirror and says, Himmel, this is the end. <laughs> ah, smile, Luigi. No, but, but sir, how am I going to smile? Look out of my antique shop. Don't you notice something? Yeah, oh, it just hit me, that sign outside. Luigi, what did that chisel cut Pasquale do it to you? Well, what's the use, Schultz? After all, it's a Pasquale's story. He's got a right to, to do whatever he wants. Ach, my little Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> you never hate anybody, do you? Well, Schultz, my mamma mia is always say one thing. If somebody hits you, you just uh, turn around to the other cheek. Yeah, but not with a fellow like Pasquale. 
He's always up at bat. <laughs> now, Luigi, take my advice. Stop churning your cheek so much. Your head is beginning to look like a pinwheel. Ah, uh, so, yes. So, well, let me tell you something, Mr. Delicatessen. That's why you was listening. Oh, it does anything I hate is a pooping palm. <laughs> Well, you are just a plain, common eavesdropper. <laughs> That's all right, and I'm going to droop for all of the eaves I want. <laughs> if you think a Luigi's ahead is looking like a pinwheel now, well, you see tomorrow when I'm auctioned off as a place to kick him out. What? No, Pasquale, you must be choking. Oh, yes. Take a look, Mr. Salami Salesman. <laughs> look close out of my face. You see anything to laugh about? No, Pasquale. All I see is a good reason to commit suicide. <laughs> oh, get out. This is my store, and I appreciate your presence by your absence. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I'm tired of all your insults. How would you like to step out into the street? That just suits me fine. Come on, we step out of the street. All right. <laughs> all right, Luigi. Now that he stepped out, we can talk. <laughs> Listen, when he said auction, into my head, an idea just pooped itself. <laughs> yeah, but, but a shook, so what are you going to do? No, no, I got a plan. First, I'm going to the night school. Miss Spalding, your classmates, the whole neighborhood is going to help you out. But a shook, shook, so you think you got a plan that will work? Of course it's going to work. Now, stop worrying, Luigi. Smile. <laughs> Be like me, always happy, always laughing. Huh? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> well, Luigi, you ready to go into your store now? Hey, in a minute to Pasquale. Hey, just look at how the place is packed. <laughs> And I was so afraid of what the Schultz is bragging about what he would do, I got scared and asked for a sheriff's and marshal to stay in your store. <laughs> please, please, Pasquale, no rubbing in. I rub in all I want. Tonight I'm a Pasquale, the Swedish of Missouri. <laughs> Just to look who's sitting in the front of your store, the front row. Only your best friends, Schultz, Horowitz, Olsen, and Miss Spaulding. Look, the whole place is a full of your pals. In fact, the stranger can't even get in. Hello, Mrs. Pellegrino. Hello, Pasquale. Go ahead. There's a room for just the one more. Thank you. I thought I was going to pick up something cheap. Well, I'm just the fella you could get it from. That's all right. There's a nobody cheaper than a you. <laughs> hey, when well, anybody else says that it's a come out of difference. <laughs> Well, Luigi, you satisfied now? My squally, I'm, I'm a filly terrible. Luigi, believe me, I'm the only friend you got. And once you leave me, I'm never going to let you darken my face again. <laughs> Luigi, what would you say if I was to call off for the auction right now and... Let you keep all you antiques. Oh, Pasquale, you want to do this for me? Sure, little pumpkin head. Oh, Pasquale, that's so wonderful. <laughs> now I'm going to do you a little favor. Maybe you're going to do me a little favor. <laughs> no. Wait, wait. Don't talk when your emotions is upset. Just let me call in my little girl. Rosa! 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 Yes, yes, my little honey, do melon. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. <laughs> well, Luigi, don't just stand there with your big ears hanging out. Say those three little words to Rosa. Three little words? Sir? Yes, tell her those three magical words that's going to make a new girl out of her. All right. Uh, right, crisper, and uh, exercise. <laughs> what? Luigi, I accept. Oh, shut up, you okay. <laughs> Come back to the kitchen. <laughs> All right, Luigi, I gave you your last chance, and now you're dead. Here, just sign this paper. Pe pepper? 
What should he say? I just don't want no monkey business. This is to say to fly that I'm the owner of all the antiques in the store, and I can do whatever I want with them. I sign it down here, right under my ex. Yeah, but Pasquale, the antiques belong to you because I'm all your money. But I'm a no sign unless you give me the right to, to buy them back. What? <laughs> all right. I'll give that to you. When are you going to get money enough to buy back, eh? <laughs> I gave Luigi rights to buy back and take it. <laughs> now, sign. All right. Good. Here's your copy. Now, come on, let's go in your store. I think we're ready to start the auction. And to think I wasted the money for a city marshal where you friends is the first the ones to cut your throat. All right. The auction is about to start. If you see any piece you'd like to buy, just let me know and I'll put it up for bidding. We've got a lot of rare and very valuable antique pieces to dispose of to the highest bidders. Now, don't be afraid to bid. Any bid is accepted. First bid starts the auction and second bid takes it out of my hands. If there are no higher bids, second bid takes it. All right. Now, let's start it. What do I have here but a genuine colonial chair from the Cromwell period? It's a colonial period. Oh. A heckler, eh? Don't mind him, folks. A genuine antique value that I would say two hundred dollars. Fifty dollars. Luigi, if you don't shut up, I'm going to get the marshal to throw you out. I'm, I'm a sorry, Pasquale. Oh, right. What am I bid? What am I bid on this genuine fight? Ha ha! Well, Luigi, you heard it with your own eyes. First, the bidder is your best friend, the Schultz. Good. Now that's the kind of action I like. First bid from my friend here is five dollars. Who said five dollars? I said five cents. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you kidding? You heard what this chair is worth. Where do you get that five cents from? My wife gives me an allowance. Eh, <laughs> uh -huh. hey, come on, auctioneer. Come on and go out with a bidding. I'm a bid of six. Six dollars. No, six. <laughs> what do you think I'm a one of those fat inflation? That's ridiculous. I got six cents. Six cents. <laughs> six cents? Do I hear more? Do I hear more? Six cents. Going. Going. Going for the last time. <laughs> Going? Go ahead already. <laughs> Hold for six cents. Mamma mia. Hey, 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 what's going on here? Now I have here a silver butler, Paul Revere, stamped on the back. What am I bid? And this time, let's have some real bidding. I bid three. Three dollars? No, three cents. <laughs> three cents. Don't worry, I got the cash. <laughs> Ridiculous! You ain't have nothing yet. Go ahead, get five cents. Who but a him? Five cents. Five cents. Do I hear more? Going. Going. Gone. Sold for five cents. Oh, Schultz, I made a good buy. You couldn't do better if you were a used car dealer. <laughs> so that's their plan, huh? They think they buy everything for pennies and then give it back to you, huh, Luigi? Well, uh, well I'm a don't know, Pasquale. After all, they're my friends, uh, and you say friends are the first ones to kick you in the face. Uh, wise guy. Well, I fixed that up fast. Hey, Joe, why are you stopping the auction? Go on. All right. Now I have the bid. Ten cents. This is crazy. That's right. I bid 11, then. Just a minute. <laughs> I won't continue this. $50. $50. <laughs> That's all right. You heard me. $50. Mamma mia. I'll show you people who's a wise guy here. Go ahead, Joe. $50. Do I hear more? If you do, you should have your ears examined. <laughs> sold to Mr. Pasquale for $50. All right, folks. Now these pieces are not going to be sold for pennies anymore, so let's see some bidding. Now, I have this genuine period painting. Three cents. Five cents. Twenty-five dollars. Well, the wise guy. Twenty-five dollars sold again to Mr. Pasquale. Now, the next piece is a porringer that we use by...
Pasquale be tried. But Pasquale was smarter. Kill her away. And here's a silver butler, Luigi. My idea was good while it lasted. Franzi, you tried it. That's so very important to me. Well, so you thought you could outwit me, eh? Ha <laughs> ha. Next time you want to play games with a me, Schultz, pick something easy like a canazza. <laughs> Pasquale, why don't you come not so yourself in the lake? <laughs> well, Mr. Marshall, I'm glad you come down here to see that everything is official. Yes, I kept a record of all bids. That's no matter. I bought everything, so instead of writing to myself a check, I'm going to save the time and forget the whole thing. What do you mean, writing yourself a check? All this stuff is belonging to me. Why, I didn't realize that. If it belongs to you, you aren't allowed to bid on it. What? Himmel, I made the second bid on the Jefferson statue. It's mine for a nigger. That's right. What? Uh, wait a second. That's mine, Mr. Marshall, but it's really belonging to Luigi. He said it's his to store until I'm to take over. Is this true, Mr. Basco? Oh, no. He's made a me sign a paper before that to give everything over to him. Here's the copy of Mr. City Marshall. That's all I need. Uh, take it, folks. Since Mr. Pasquale owned all the items he bid on... They revert to the next highest bid under here. Oh, yeah. Well, I made the second bid on the Jefferson statue, and that's mine for a nickel. And the painting is mine for eight cents. And I get the Virginia geography book for two cents. <laughs> Luigi, Luigi, talk to them. Tell them to give everything back. But a Pasquale is there nothing I can do. Well, Miss Olsen, here's your book. Yes, pay your money. Luigi, oh. stop it. They might do anything, anything. Anything? Yes. yes. All right, all right, uh, Pasquale. Hey, wait, to stop us, friends. Uh, Everything uh, is to go back to, to Pasquale. Uh, what are you talking about? Yes, that's, that's right. I'm a man of deal with him. He's never again going to ask me to marry his daughter, Rose. Oh, <laughs> all right, Luigi, now you broke. You've got a nut thing. There's only one way out for you. What's the matter, Pasquale? Marry my... Hey, what's the matter with me? I can't control myself. Yeah, that's what I'm a thought. All right, everybody. Go on the like it before. Oh, I the way, the way, the way, the my son. Why you do this? Well, it's because I'm a can't to kind of draw myself a neither. Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> And so, Mamma Mia, everything is a turn out to find. I'm a got to my store back with all the antiques, and it's a cost me a dollar and a twenty ninety cents. <laughs> For this, I'm a got to my friends to thank. And the reason I'm a got to such a good friends, Mamma Mia, is because of how you used to teach me about the life when I was a little bambino. So I'm a thank you. Your loving son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you to stop at that convenient display of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum next time you go to the store. Get some delicious Wrigley's Spearmint for your own enjoyment, and take home a few packages for your family and friends. People really appreciate it when you offer them a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint, because just about everyone enjoys its refreshing mint flavor and the smooth, good chewing. Remember, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. It costs so little and tastes so good. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conley as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, Joel Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen, and Sarah Berner as Mrs. Pellegrino. Music is under the direction of Lud Glusson. Friends, the Wrigley Company invite you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of these same CBS stations. And be sure to see the special article on our star, J. Carol Nash, in Collier's Magazine on your newsstand this Friday. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.